Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Justin, and today I'm gonna to show you something that I discovered. I just discovered this today. Every Friday when the market closes, I like to uh, research, back test, and try to build new things. Every single week I do this. Uh, from Friday till Monday, I usually build a new indicator strategy and I back test it. And most of them end up not working. That's just the name of the game. Most of them don't work. And then a small percentage of them that do work, you have to back test it, see if it works. And if it does work, then you have a semi good system. And this one, I wanted to build a swing trading system. And I noticed something by accident. So the goal here was I wanted to build a swing trading system for reversals. And what I did was I was putting my mouse over key points in the market, like here, 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 here. And I kept noticing something on accident. And that is a lot of the major reversals in the market tend to happen in the middle of the month. So let's start at current time and let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. I'm gonna breeze through it, it's really simple. I narrowed it down to one day and that is usually on the 13th of every month. That is when the reversal tends to happen. So as you can see right here, December 13th, that one reversed. And we are coincidentally at a zone of resistance. So you could combine your knowledge of support and resistance, which is really basic and simple to understand. You could combine support and resistance with this idea of a reversal on the 13th or in the middle of the month. So right here at a zone of resistance and on December 13th, we have it reversing down. So that one was pretty well. And let's go here to November 13th. Uh, November, okay, it skipped 13, so 14. We are basically at a zone of resistance. So at least based on this zone right here, right, a zone of resistance. And it moved a bit sideways. So we won't really call that a successful trade. We'll just say that's like a bit break even or sideways. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at uh, October, October 13th. So right here, October 13th, we are at a zone of support. So October 13th, so that's a buy. So that trade ended up being good. Now let's go to September 13th. We are at a zone of resistance. Uh, let me show you an example of how I would draw a zone of resistance. We're gonna go to the rectangle tool from here to here. And you can see it is damn near precise, uh, pretty much down to the penny for the reversal. So September 13th was the close of that candle. So if you got into the sell trade here and held it, you would have had a really good profit until next month on the 13th. So we will consider that a winning trade right there. So I think you get my point. The point here is that I noticed on the 13th of every month, it generally has some kind of reversal. Uh, August 15th, so it skips the 13th and it goes to the 15th because of the weekend. Literally at the very top, it reverses. So that is an easy sell, we're at resistance. So you get my point. If you go back in time and if you plot all the 13ths, you're gonna see a lot of major market reversals. Now there are times when it's not perfect. This is not a 100% win rate strategy. Really this is designed to be used as a confirmation tool, in my opinion. I don't think you should use this to just blindly follow and enter a trade. I am approaching it from the standpoint of plot a zone of support and resistance, and if it's there, then we reverse. That is pretty much the concept like I showed you here. Right, a zone of resistance, the 13th came around, so we sell. Right, a zone of support, the 13th came around, so we buy. That's pretty much the basis of the strategy. Uh, let's go back up here to December and January, so I can just show you this. Uh, let's go to December 13th, right here. December 13th, we're at a zone of resistance, and it tanks. So that right there is a good trade. Uh, let's go to January 13th, right here. Again, zone of resistance. We're at this whole zone of resistance up here on the daily. And not only, not only that, but this 13th candle, it did a tweezer top at the top with an engulfing candle. So an engulfing tweezer pretty much. And it tanked even down more. So if you look at this, this is also, what is this? A head and shoulders, W, big M, however you wanna look at it. This is a very common pattern in the market on all time frames of a reversal downwards. It's pretty simple when you look at it. Again, I'm not saying this is like the God of all strategies. This is just something I discovered within a few minutes of looking at major market reversals on NASDAQ specifically. I have not tested this on Forex pairs or any other pair. I'm just testing it on NASDAQ at the moment. So I just wanted to share this with you in case uh, you find a way to improve it, make it better. Maybe you want to 
take this and build your own system around it. Whatever you want to do, I just wanted to share this with you because it is something pretty interesting. Let's finish up for the rest of 2022 just so we can see it. Uh, okay, so January. Now let's go to February 13th. And right here, February 13th. Uh, so in this case, the 14th right here. I probably would have lost this trade. And here's why. Right here is a zone of support. And I would have bought because it just reached the support. So if I would have bought here, it would it did go up. But it didn't go up all the way, right? So this would have either been a break-even trade or a losing trade. But just to be fair, let's consider it a losing trade. So that right there is a losing trade. Uh, now let's look at March 13th. This one is pretty much damn near perfect. Uh, so we go from the 11th to the 14th. It skipped because of the weekend. So on the 14th, really obvious, we're at a zone of support. It rejected once, twice, and then a third time right here. On the 14th, it went straight up. So you got a picture perfect entry right here at the bottom. And let's go to April. Uh, April 13th, Let's see if we can find it. Right here, April 13th, uh, we were at the zone of resistance. Price is pushing down. Now, let me show you this. Let me draw another box. This is for supply and demand zones, for those of you that trade based on those. What happened? Price came down, went back up, rejected, and fell. So that one right there would have been a nice, successful sell entry. And done. Now let's look for May, May 13th. If we go here to May 13th, we are at the bottom. And I, you know what, right here, May 13th, this bullish candle probably would have been a losing trade, to be honest, because we would have probably bought right here uh, because we're at, I don't want to say support. There's nothing here on the left unless you zoom out and look. But if we're just focusing on short term in this area, uh, really nothing nothing to the left so it's either a sideways trade because it went down then up or it would have been a losing trade but again just to be fair let me go ahead and mark it as a losing trade just because there was no significant reversal in the market uh, now let's go to june 13th and here we go we are at the very bottom we're at support june 13th and look what happened it went straight up after that so that right there was a good trade now let's look for july Right here is July 13th. This is a tweezer bottom and we are at support. And what happened right at this tweezer bottom? It went straight up. So that right there is another winning trade. So there we go. We just finished the entire year of 2022. Assuming you followed every single trade without a strategy. If you just got into the trades based on reversals in the market, then let me show you uh, how many trades you would have won out of 12 trades, so one trade per year. So this is last year, let me delete that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So at the moment, we have nine successful trades out of 12. And again, I would say this sideways trade that wouldn't be losing or profitable. It's just there. That's just like a, I guess we can call it a break even trade. So we had nine successful trades. We had one break even slash sideways, and then we had two losing trades. But notice here how the loss, it doesn't matter if you bought or sold, the loss would have been either small or nothing compared to the wins that you will have with huge, like, like look at this, from here all the way down to here, from here all the way up to here, from here all the way down to here, you get my point. The wins can be really massive and the losses, it just depends again on how you manage your risk and it depends on your own analysis. But I just wanted to show this to you. I'm not here to hindsight trade. I'm trying my best not to do hindsight trading. I just wanted to show you a concept I came up with. Uh, let's go back in time to see other times. Like let's just go right here. I'm literally just picking a random point in the market uh, let's see if we can find the 13th. Okay, so the 13th, look, I you can't make this up. I just picked a random point. This is my first time doing this. A zone of resistance, and on the 13th is right here. What happened? It fell. Okay, so that is a winning trade. Uh, let's find the 13th again. Uh, let's do right here, the 13th. So in this case, because we're at resistance, we would have sold, but it went straight up. So that run right there is a losing trade. Okay, so let me just keep on going over here. Let's just pick. Oh, let's just pick here. Let's see what happened here. I see a nice little W. 
Let's see if the 13th is around here. And look at that, the 13th right here, October 13th, 2021. What happened? We're at a zone of support and it ended up forming a W, uh, which we end up seeing after it formed. So there you go. It went up. And uh, let, me know, let me look right here, somewhere here. I want to see if there's something around this area. Here we go, the 13th of July. And then it fell down. So you, again, there's nothing over here to the left to determine an official zone of resistance, but we do see a lot of wicks. How many wicks do we see? One, two. Uh, okay, so the 13th created a wick, and then the 14th created a wick, and then the 15th. So three days of rejection at that level, then it tanked. So again, it all depends on how you personally do this. It all depends on how you analyze it. So that is it. I just wanted to show you this because I found it pretty interesting that halfway into every month, if there is going to be a major market reversal for NASDAQ specifically, it will usually happen around the 13th. Uh, again, that's not a fact. It's just something I noticed today uh, when doing a little manual back test. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.